Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Hello. Welcome to episode number 198 of Category 5 Technology TV, the shortest episode of Category 5 ever due to technical glitches off the uh, off the bat. Hey, everybody. How's your week going? Oh, crazy busy. Yeah? Crazy, crazy busy. I thought I was late today, and it turns out you guys were waiting yeah, for me anyway. Just waiting. Yeah, we're just kind of kicking so back nice. and wasn't doing anything in particular. Right, sure. Those who were watching Backstage Pass know that I was just, just kind of lounging. And I'm probably drinking beer. Yeah, just hanging out. And Eating cookies. Yeah. Hid the cookies once I got here, obviously. No, I ate them all. Oh, well. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. So tonight is a little different format, uh, uh, sort of unintentionally, but it just happens this way, and sometimes there are things that are out of our control, but our commitment is to, of course, broadcast every single week, even if it means it's extremely, extremely difficult even if it means starting the show a half hour late. Now, for those of you who are watching this through RSS feeds or uh, after the fact through On Demand, make sure you make a note that um, this show has started at, it's now 7.28 p.m. So if you're following along in the chat logs, so you're following along, finding out what's being said, our time mark right now is 7.29. <laughs> so you'll be able to follow through. So... Ten minutes into the show, it'll be just about 7.40 in your chat logs, and that will help you to determine where you're at. Okay, tonight we're looking at Zorin OS uh, to continue our series on uh, our Linux distributions, uh, just kind of looking at uh, some of the distributions that are available to give you a chance to, to see them without actually having to install them. Uh, we'll bring them up on the screen and you can have a look. So. Uh, if you've been to our website, have you uh, have you noticed the thermometer there on our website this week? Big news. If you bring up Category 5 TV, we have officially received 102% of the required donations in order to... Uh, replace the server, the microphones, all that kind of stuff, wow. which is incredible. That's and amazing. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for your support. Uh, as we are a little bit over and um, as some donations still come in, and, and we, uh, we definitely welcome your donations even still, um, those donations are going to go towards um, further upgrading the studio, fixing up things, little odd things that we weren't expecting. Um, I had to purchase a video card, for example, which wasn't originally a part of uh, our plan, but we did have to purchase a video card for the server because the integrated video was not sufficient for broadcasting. So so tonight we're broadcasting on the new server for the first time, and it's, it's kind of, um, I'd say, 60-70% where it needs to be to, to, uh, for me to consider it 100% stable and ready to go. But that's where, you know, it's like we've, mm -hmm. it's been crunch time. It's, uh, we ran into some problems on the weekend. Um, I actually had to rebuild it twice. And it turns out that the hard drives that came in the server had, 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 were failing or there was something wrong with them. And so having installed the operating system and all of our broadcasting suite, then trying to figure out, well, why is nothing really working? The operating system would boot, everything would come up, and Wirecast would load but it was dropping frames and it was really, really poor quality and I just couldn't get it to work. And so um, so then I tried it on different hard drives and of course that meant rebuilding it again. Lots of work, just rebuilding the software anyways because fortunately the hardware was pretty much together. Um, so And uh, it seems that, uh, that things are working fairly well. We'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on it over the next uh, few weeks as we kind of tweak things and, and uh, improve the performance and, and tweak the way that uh, Wirecast interacts with our videos. So, But uh, very exciting for us, and I thank you for all your support. Microphones did come in, but unfortunately that wasn't on the plate uh, as far as time to set that up. So uh, Krista's using the, the old lapel tonight. Yeah, I know. 
I know. It's not Such quite as pop starish as my microphone. That's not. Not at all. But it's still, you Can know, you do it'll get by. Just like that. Just like that. So natural for you. It used mm. to be. It used to be. <laughs> all right. Viewer points this week. Bry Murray, who uh, is lounging <laughs> in his living room on a 37-inch TV connected to his boxy box. Uh, he watches Category 5 technology TV and is wearing a uh, Radio Caroline t-shirt he wanted me to mention as well. Uh, let's see here now. Everything is different now. I'm pushing buttons and it's not doing what it used to do. So, there's Brian. Aha. He looks very comfy. That's he looks nice. extremely comfortable. And I do notice the Fanta as well as a single chocolate bar in the bottom of a bowl. Oh. There and I think just one. Or I think no. I think he, he actually he saved that us. for us. Oh, like it's a Kit Kat or something. In the mail? But surprisingly, there's a little bit of healthy foods going oh, on right here too. Them, right beside it, there's good. there are some oranges, and so that's uh, that's that's, that's good. good. Keep the balance. That's good. Yeah, Brian, thank you so much for uh, sending in the picture. We will give you 100 viewer points for that, and thanks for watching Category 5 TV. Looks like a comfortable setup, and I love that uh, the boxy box is letting you watch Category 5 TV on your, uh, on your LCD TV. Then we have, again, buttons aren't quite what they were. Eight Miles from TJ is watching on a 32-inch LCD TV and enjoying Category 5 that way. And there he is in the office with a great big screen uh, for 100 viewer points, and uh, thank you. Uh, for your uh, for your submission there, that again is eight miles from TJ, mm. who sent that in. If you'd like to get some viewer points, uh, just like these two guys who got a hundred points each tonight, uh, make sure you uh, send us an email with an attachment of you watching Category Five TV. Both of our guys tonight are really like they're laid back. They got their feet up. It's a I don't relaxing know time for them. It's a very relaxing time. I don't know if you, you know, noticed you or a, not, but a like busy, the stressful day, and you just you know throw your feet, feet up. up. Yeah, just enjoying the show, taking it easy. Watching Category Five. Makes sense. So put your feet up. Send us a picture. <laughs> we'll give you some points. Also, cool. we'll just give a quick shout out. Um, Jot let us know that we have a new live viewer tonight, Dominic. Hey, Dominic. Welcome. Sorry, we're so tardy. We're not usually this bad. We're not usually. <laughs> it's been quite a fun week. I'm still getting things <laughs> set up as we're talking. It's like, okay, we Can really got to go live. I mean, at this point, we're a half hour show. And so I'm actually still setting things up. So uh, what do you have coming up in the news oh while I'm uh, prepping all your camera angles and getting all that set up for all you? All sorts of wonderful things. So coming up in the newsroom, could Google Plus finally be Google's into social networking? A new pen can be used to draw actual functional circuitry. Apple finally fixed a vulnerability in its development website that was reported in April. A new downloadable book for, from and about Creative Commons is now, or is available now. Stick around, these stories are coming up in, how long are they coming up in? If I say 30 minutes. I Four know. minutes. Well, okay. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to figure that out. So stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much go straight from the teaser right into the news. There you go. All right. I think everything's set. There we go. Fantastic. Well. So... Huh. Viewer questions, we'll, uh, we'll hit a couple of questions if we can. Um, tonight, of course, a little bit off as far as schedule goes because of the fact that um, we're working with new hardware and trying to get everything set up. Um, so tonight, you'll actually uh, be seeing as we, as we set up some camera angles and things in Wirecast, and you'll um, get to experience that with us. And next week, hopefully, we'll be uh, right back on track. And then the following week is our 200th episode. Holy smokes. You believe Unreal. I don't believe it. Mm-hmm. All right. So you wanna wanna grab a few of your questions? Here? Yeah, I'd love Is that to. Where we're going? Sure. Awesome. First question from John R. Streets says, hey, "Hi, Robbie. I have been asked to install Windows XP on a computer with Ubuntu 10.04 already installed." The drive is a single terabyte drive, so there's plenty of room to make a partition and install XP. I have installed Windows with Ubuntu before, but never in that order. How mm. can I do this without wiping out Grub? 
or is there a way to reinstall Grub after I install Windows? I could back up his computer and start over, but I really don't want to do that. I'm pretty sure you would know if this can or can't be done. Thanks for all your help. Yeah, it can be done, but the, the catch-22 is that Grub isn't the hard one to get to replace. Um, what happens, though, is if you install Windows, Windows XP, it's going to install the Windows bootloader, and the Windows bootloader is not going to see Linux. So then you run into the problem, okay, then you reinstall Grub over the master boot record, and then you lose the Windows bootloader, so I'm not sure how well that will work. As Dave Maydew is saying in the chat room, you're always best to start with Windows and then go with Linux afterwards, because what would happen then is that it sometimes can tap into the Windows bootloader, um, leaving it intact, or um, it, it does a better job of detecting things. So that said, here's what I would do. I would get a copy of Clonezilla. Uh, we'll post a link in the, in the show notes for episode number 198. And Clonezilla will allow you to create a copy, an image of that hard drive. It's clonezilla.org, and it's a free download. With that cloned image of your hard drive, it's a full backup. So if you completely destroy everything, you can restore the clone, and everything's back to the way it was. So you don't have to worry about anything. Just make sure you do uh, an image of the entire hard drive, not the partitions. Do the whole hard drive so that it gets everything. So... Then uh, try installing your Windows XP. It's going to overwrite the bootloader, of course. It's going to mess up everything. You're not going to be able to boot Linux anymore. And then get on to uh, the Super Grub Disk website, which is uh, now the version that you want to get here is called Rescatux. And Rescatux is going to it says fix scrub to fix scrub really what that's going to do is it's going to reinstall grub on that system uh, once you've got windows xp installed again because you've, you're going to have a backup at that point it's not going to be a problem because if something happens and, and things don't work out you're okay and you can restore everything back to the way it was and then try again but it's a little it's a little riskier going that route and i think that's exactly why you're asking is because of that uh, but Rescatux should be able to put the bootloader back together, but whether or not Windows will accept uh, being able to boot, that's that's where the problematic issues can, can occur. So, um, But give that a try, all right? Let us know how it goes. I'd love to hear from you. Love to know. Uh, and, and again, I'll, I'll post links for you in the, in the show notes for 198. Uh, but that's supergrubdisk.org and clonezilla.org are the two tools that I'd recommend for you tonight. Cool. Great. Uh, Thanks for the question. Jump into another one here. It says, hi, Robbie and team. I came across this application whilst doing some research on the internet. It's compatible with Ubuntu, and it makes life easy to change the boot splash screen. So for anyone not used to the command line for changing the Plymouth boot splash screen, then this application will help anyone mm. install new Plymouth themes or change the Plymouth theme with ease. And there's the link there. Uh, it's zorn-os.webs.com slash splash screen manager dot html I imagine awesome what I'll do is I'll post the link that uh, that Scorpio 55 is uh, recommending I'll post that in the show notes for episode number 198 for you interesting that uh, you're finding some cool tools on the Zorn OS uh, website as a resource they do have some pretty cool software and uh, we're going to be looking at the OS in just a few minutes time what I'm actually doing over here, um, and Krista can see this, but uh, the viewers can't, is I'm just setting up your camera angles. And with Wirecast, mm. which is the software we use to broadcast, what I'm able to do is move things around like that. So now what I've done is so I've now got... now I'm Robbie Ferguson. Well, now you're Robbie Ferguson. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm going to click on my, what's called the checker, or the the lower third there, and I'm going to change my name to your name okay and I'm gonna just reposition that a little bit this is all done through Wirecast which is available at cat5.tv slash Wirecast okay so positioning there is uh, is pretty decent and then let's see what I want to do is I want to add a new media uh, piece here which is going to be again a text layer let's see what I can come up with there are tons to choose from Wirecast has all these kinds of things, right? 
So you can place these over top and put text on top of them. So what I want, what I would like for the news is something kind of along these lines, right? Looks kind of cool, kind of perfect for the category five newsroom, but of course it's not the right size. So I'm gonna, you know, adjust it, move it around, whatever I need to do. So you can see that we're we're actually live on the air and able to do this right while we're broadcasting, which is really, really cool. I mean, to be able to do that with, with a tool like Wirecast is fantastic. If you ever get into, you know, if you've got an interest in broadcasting, then, uh, then this would be a tool that I would strongly recommend. Back to our shot here. We're going to add some text. simple as that. Now I'm just kind of throwing that in really really quick just so that it's in there and, mm -hmm. and good to go. But then what we want to be able to do is we want to do what uh, what we do during the show which is to add a desktop presenter window. So desktop presenter is like a remote desktop for Wirecast. Traditionally when you're broadcasting video uh, you used to have to use like a video output from a computer and put that into a video capture card in the broadcast system and use it like a camera. With Wirecast, with Desktop Presenter, we're able to bring up any computer screen. Note that mine is an Ubuntu computer and I'm loading Desktop Presenter perfectly through Wine and uh, and that supports you know everything that you see me doing here. You know, if I wanna do my 3D effects, everything is supported. It's, it's no problem, there's no, we used to have a problem with Flickr and uh, I was able to figure that out as well, so that's very cool. So what I do during a live show is I have the pictures for the news, and they are loaded from my computer through Desktop Presenter. So there's the uh, the first story that uh, that Krista's mentioning there. So back at this shot, what we'll do is we'll create a new uh, media layer, and we'll put that right at the very very top. And we're going to change that to, and I know you can't see it, but you can understand, you can grasp what it is that I'm doing. Now what I've done is I've put that layer on top. So now I'm going to resize that, which again, you can't see me doing, but I'm triggering the, uh, the element as soon as I'm done so that you can actually see. So now I've resized that. I'm going to reposition it. Okay, and then because we're no longer using a widescreen monitor for that particular system, I'm going to do some cropping at the top. And then some cropping at the bottom. There we go. So now we've got our basic layout set up for a basic news segment that we'll be able to do tonight. Cool. Cool. That's all done through Wirecast and done right here live. So if you'd like to uh, take over jump with the news, into the yeah, news. <laughs> jump straight into it now that everybody understands what is involved in setting up a shot in Wirecast, um, and uh, yeah, I'll let you take it away. We don't have music sure. uh, yet, but uh, that will be here as Maybe well. Maybe you could sing the intro into the news yourself. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> from the Category 5.TV newsroom, dun, dun. Um, should I oh, start? Right. I don't, 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 <laughs> don't want to make you laugh during the news. Don't want to make her disastrous. laugh during the news. <laughs> Online search giant Google has launched a new social networking website in its latest attempt to take on Facebook, which now claims more than 500 million users. Google Plus allows individuals to share photos, messages, and comments, but also integrates the company's maps and images into the service. It also aims to help users easily organize contacts within groups. Some analysts say Google has simply reproduced features of Facebook while adding a video chat function, but Vic Gundatra, senior vice president of engineering at Google, said online sharing needs a serious rethink, so it's time we got started. After a number of failed attempts to tackle social media, could Google Plus be the one? 
Email your thoughts to the newsroom at category5.tv. Scientists in the U.S. have created a roller a rollerball pen that can be used to draw functioning circuit boards. The research team at the University of Illinois used conductive silver ink to sketch electrical circuits on paper, wood, and other flexible surfaces. Although similar pens have been available for a number of years, their ink tends not to be bendable when dry. Most of the work in this area is focused on developing inkjet printers capable of creating circuits. That's cool. That is pretty cool. The hacker group that flagged a vulnerability on an Apple development website, a vulnerability, sorry, a vulnerability that could have led to phishing attacks against Mac OS X, iPad, and iPad developers, says Apple finally fixed the hole that was identified two months ago. YGN told Apple about the arbitrary URL redirect vulnerability and cross-site scripting issue on April 25th, warning it could lead to phishing attacks on developers using the website. Apple acknowledged, acknowledged YGN's information on April 27th, but didn't fix the hole. That frustrated YGN, which let news reporters know it would go public with the information in a short period of time, even if Apple didn't correct the problem. One day after news reports on the situation, Apple fixed the problem. I think you put that one in there just, you know, just to stick it to me. Well, Apple has problems just like, just like Windows. Hmm, moving on. <laughs> The campaign has been launched to help you avoid breaking the law when they po- breaking the law when they post pictures, music, and videos online. Copyright group Creative Commons has published a guide to identify material that can be used freely without getting sued. It also advises individuals how to protect content they have made themselves. Some legal experts say that the system is a stopgap measure and and want to see copyright laws radically reformed. Around 500 million pieces of work are currently covered by Creative Commons. Creative Commons Chief of Staff, Lisa Green, said that the campaign was partly aimed at combating the myth that it supported giving everything away for free, and says, rather than giving away, mostly we talk about enabling enabling legal sharing and enabling remix. Download a free copy of the book at thepowerofopen.org. Get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of honor or mention, email newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Krista Wells. Thanks, Krista. Oh, anytime. <laughs> the cata- this episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you by Pogo Plug. And you'll find them at cat5.tv slash pogoplug, as well as Planet Calypso. Join me in the massive multiplayer online game. Excited to uh, see you there and uh, join our our society there. It's cat5.tv slash calypso to download the game and install that, and we'll be able to play through the internet. Speaking of the pogoplug, Mm -hmm. what would a half-hour show be without giving away a pogoplug? So what I would like you to do is at the end of tonight's show, email contest at category5.tv. Pick a random number. Between? Just four digits of randomness. Four digits. Seven, three, two, eight. Seven, three, two, eight. That's your random code. And multiply it by two. Oh, it's a skill testing question. And add one. And add one. <laughs> And email that to contest at category5.tv. And we're going to do a draw uh, next week for that. So, very cool. Cat5.tv slash Pogoplug to find out more about them. Uh, We already said greets to uh, one of our new viewers in the chat room. But if you're new here and we haven't said hello, make sure you uh, let us know. And uh, say Robbie F. or... Uh, Krista, are you Krista tonight? I'm just Krista tonight. Krista tonight? I was in such a rush, just Krista. Krista. All right, so uh, if you say our name, it will turn red on our magical screens. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? Looking at the chat room, hey, everybody. Scorpio55, Agamotto, Gadwill, Smitty Smith, Agamotto, did I already say your name? I did, but I'll say it twice. I think I said it three times. Well, no, now you did. Yeah. Yes. Dave Maydew hmm. has been following me on Twitter, at Robbie Ferguson, and uh, talking to me about the new server and everything there. Appreciate your support and, uh, and encouragement through that whole thing. Thanks, Becca. Awesome. Good to see everybody. Jot, 
Dominic. And if you'd like to join us in the live chat room, all you have to do is get on to category5.tv, join the chat room, and also you can get on to Freenode if you're using a IRC chat client, and you can join the Category 5 chat room. Cool. Well, this is the quickest moving show of uh, I think so. Of ever. <laughs> but what I would like to do tonight is uh, we're going to take a quick look at Zorin OS. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think that this was Scorpio 55 who put us on to this particular distribution. And honestly, uh, let's see here. Mathman is saying that uh, that he follows uh, follows me on Twitter via a and it disappeared. That's what happens if I'm not. What does it say? On uh, his Sony Dash. Sony Dash. Mm -hmm. What's that? I don't know. It sounds cool. It sounds speedy. But it says Sony. My dash. Sony dash. Dash from Sony. Oh, it's an, a personal internet viewer. You know, I, I was looking at uh, some Android devices recently, and, and the whole idea of internet in the palm of your hand, and even with the iPod Touch that I use, it's so nice to just be able to... Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes when, when the kids are playing video games on my wife's computer, she'll use the iPod Touch to get on Facebook and stuff. So it's like, there, there's so much you can do with it. That's kind of cool. Looks a little bit like a tablet, I think. So you follow me on Twitter using that. Do you watch the show on that? Be interested to know, and uh, would certainly and take be interested. take a picture. It, that's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. We're so I in just, tune tonight. Yeah. It's like, it is. Perfect. Uh, yeah, take a picture of you watching it, and and I will give you an extra point if you have the floating scene with the sun. Oh, and the, behind you! Ooh, a little bit of GNU image manipulation. <laughs> wow! But send me the original too, because I like to see the the real deal. Funky. Okay. Let's take a look. Okay, Zorin OS, like I was saying, was I was just put onto this recently by by viewer Scorpio fifty five, I believe, and I have to say, it's really quite fantastic. Hmm. I've seen a lot of distributions uh, over the years, and been using Ubuntu for a long time, and I've used a couple of Ubuntu derivatives, and I I think you'll you'll know if you've tried this since it was recommended on the show two weeks ago. It's really sleek, it's really clean, and it's really ready to go out of the box. I'm going to fire this puppy up. And I just uh, just installed this today. If you are a Windows user, or if you're a Mac user looking to switch to Linux... What, what if I'm not looking to switch? I don't know. Mac has then viruses. I just, so does everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> the next it's the only thing viruses. he's got. Yeah, that's the Nick's only. got viruses. It's pretty good, though, when you say. All right, I'm going to log in here. Turn into grade five taunting. <laughs> <laughs> Do they say that? In, I I got to teach my daughter. She's going into grade one this year. She needs to be able to she say, needs to know well, Mac has viruses. Mm, I run Linux at home. She does my not daughter need to runs know Linux. that. She's awesome. She's six, and she runs Linux, and she loves it. And she and her brother know their way around. In, in all fairness, have they been introduced to the Mac yet? Installed AWN. <laughs> so no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hmm. I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> Hear me. You notice uh, one of the greatest upgrades that we have this week is that you can no longer see the Mac logo. Oh, really? Oh, that's true. <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was, it was a we jaunty it dance. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Zorn OS, as I'm mm -hmm. saying, if you're coming from Windows, oh my goodness, this is, this takes me back to the Lindos days when L Lindos was trying to become Linux for Windows users. It really takes me back to that because it's so sleek. It's so like Windows 7. The layout, the way that your application menu works. 
it's so like Windows. And that's exactly what they're going for. They're trying to create a distribution, and I think they've effectively done it, a distribution that is comfortable for users of other operating systems to migrate over. That said, it is Linux, and so you're able to um, run it as Linux. It's based on Ubuntu, and it's pretty clean. First impressions as far as the aesthetics go, and I always ask, I gotta ask Krista, because... That is a rather large computer icon. That is a little absurd, I have to say. That looks a little bit... I, I imagine, what what's that, access to your hard drive? Is that... That would be like your your Nautilus, I would expect, yeah? Mm. So, your file system. And so, it's what I can important. do, though, if, if this is true to Linux, I can right-click on that and resize the icon, and it is. Look at that. It's an SVG, so I can fix it. Oh, there we go. Much better. So, that's, that is truly a lot better. Cool. But, yes, I, I noticed that as well. Hmm. Other than that, looks of the system. This is out of the box. I haven't touched anything. This is what it looks like. I think it's. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Um, honestly, I think it looks a little naive. How do you mean um, naive? In the sense that it looks like a toy you would give a kid, and it has like the big buttons on it and, yeah. and the the, and the, the simplistic the colors and stuff like that, right? Yeah, I like blue though. Not that it. Not that it's a bad thing. It just it's not usual to see that in technology. Everybody's trying to one up. The, Everyone's the trying to cram as much stuff as they as possibly can as in there. Possible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think it's clean. Yeah, no, absolutely. It does yeah. have a little bit of that, like, that effect is a little much, I think. Th these are the out of the box effects. Oh, I so thought you were all cool and added them. No. I'm, no, I'm, I'm he's pretty not cool, cool. <laughs> but I did not add these because that would give you a mixed um, review. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to. We type in comp is there and let's see if we can kind of tweak this a little bit because I'm not too sure about that whole explode thing. I'm going to type in animate and it gives me this animations and let's go close animation leaf spread highlight that double click and let's change that to oh I don't know fade this is how easy it is to configure something like Linux so now that application menu fades out instead right I think that's a little that's quite a bit better see how easy it is to tweak mm. though very easy very easy to tweak so if you didn't like the effects that's how quickly and easily we can change it and you'll notice that the the needed application in order to change it was included with the system so I'm gonna go into this control center which interestingly is very much like a, a Windows control panel but check this out Look at all the different features. I mean, they're fantastic. I'm going to click on this Look Changer just to see what we find. And you'll notice we've got the option to make our desktop look like Windows 7, look like GNOME. Well, there you go, Linux users. If you'd like to use uh, Zorin OS with just GNOME, I like that idea. Or Windows XP. Let's take a look. Please re-log in to apply the changes. Sure. Let's log out. Where do we go to log out? <laughs> well, because I don't want to do a full reboot. I do kind of like those effects. They're kind of sleek. Log out. Okay, there we go. Tooltip is helpful. There we go. Hey, cool, it says 0, 0, 2, 0, 2. We found a glitch. <laughs> uh, yes. There it goes. Oh, look at this. Now we have an actual start menu. And it does indeed look like uh, a Windows-based start menu. But you'll notice, again, we've still got these cool effects. But we also have that advantage, what we were talking about last week, about how Linux is so well sorted. If I go into games, it's just the games. There's no extra stuff. If I go into graphics, it's just the graphics stuff. right? 
And this is again all out of the box, so this is all the stuff that comes with it. You'll notice it's Google Chrome instead of Firefox, but easy enough to switch. And everything is very, very clean. It came with Wine as well, so you can run Windows applications. Very cool. Other than that, ease of installation, it was absolutely simple to install uh, Zorin OS. Uh, just a couple of clicks. Very similar um, to the Ubuntu installer. Uh, the organization of the menus looks fantastic. It's mm -hmm. really clean. There's not a lot of extra stuff that you don't need. Uh, probably even more so than the PC Linux OS that we were looking at last week. The included suite of software, as I said, it's uh, it's not Firefox. It's uh, It's Chrome, which may take some getting used to. If you're not used to that, you can always change it. Uh, it comes with OpenShot Video Editor, which we reviewed on the show recently, uh, which is very cool. If we click on that, performance of the operating system is very good, too. Let's just take a quick look at OpenShot. This is 1.3.0. Current version is 1.3.1, so it's just very slightly behind. Uh, but for uh, an out-of-the-box solution, I think that's, that's pretty good. It's certainly better than the one that's in the repositories for Ubuntu Base. Other than that, Office Suite, LibreOffice, LibreOffice is uh, included. This is, of course, a DVD installation. This is not coming to you as a CD, uh, Zorin OS. And I'm using tonight the free version of the operating system. There are some uh, commercial versions of the OS as well, uh, which include some additional features, such as, if you're interested in making your Linux computer look like a Mac, just as much as it makes it look like a Windows XP or a Windows 7 system, we're able to actually make our uh, Zorin OS system look like a Mac OS system as well. Back at our look changer, I'm going to switch over to Linux GNOME here just to see how true we are to the uh, the original GNOME system. And then we're uh, we're pretty much out of time at that point. Out of the box usability, I think, is exceptionally high for this operating system, this distribution, because of the fact, especially one, it's clean, but two, it's it's so familiar because you can change the interface to what you're used to. You don't have to learn a whole new interface if you don't want to just yet. You can make that switch to Linux, but you can do it with the look of Windows XP. You can do it with the look, the appearance of Windows 7. And then once you're used to it, we can switch over to GNOME mode and you're running a full, beautiful GNOME system. And of course, everything is customizable if you want to change the look, the feel. It gives us back what Ubuntu has taken away, which is that control over our distribution. Ubuntu has gone the route of uh, saying, okay, this is how we're going to do it. It's going to be Unity, and everyone's going to love it, and that's not the case. So if you want control of your operating system again, if you want control of your Linux distribution, it looks to me as though Zorin OS is a fantastic uh, solution for that, and I would encourage you to check that out. We're going to post some links of course, in the uh, in the show notes of episode number 198, but that is zorin-os.com, and you can download the free version just to give it a try, and then if you'd like to get the additional features of the, uh, the commercial versions that are available to you, you'll be supporting a great, uh, a great distribution, I think, and I don't, uh, you know, some people would say that there's a problem with people who charge for Linux, and I don't think so in a case where they're really adding a value-added service of making this thing really sleek. I think out of the box, it's one of the better solutions that I've seen recently, and uh, so that in itself says, you know what, I'd like to, i donate to these guys, let alone paying a little bit. I think it's like 10 pounds or something like that. It's not a lot of money to get a full version of the software, so if we actually go through that process, get it, you've got the free version, the premium version, premium version, yeah, it's like it's ten euro. Pardon me, not pounds. Seven euro. There's a version for seven euro. You can get a physical disc for ten euro plus three euro shipping. So it's not a lot of money to spend if you want the commercial version. You're supporting them, and there is the free version if you don't want to spend any money and you want to just get the out of the box Linux solution, which is exactly what I'm running on my system. That's Zorin OS. Zorin-OS.com, and the only thing that made us go hmm was that big old My Computer <laughs> button, or the Computer button, which we fixed in a matter of seconds. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. I'm Krista Wells. What's going on in the chat room? Oh, you know, just some Mac PC controversy. Oh, yeah? Fabulous. Mm -hmm. They just knew you'd be watching. I think so. 
Gang, how is the uh, the quality tonight as far as that goes? This is our first time broadcasting with the new server. Would love to hear from you as far as how it looks, how it sounds. Sound, of course, is not 100% tonight because we're only using one of the headset microphones, but we do have uh, Krista's uh, is going to be set up as well. Gadwill says that the quality is so much better than recent weeks. Very good. Much sharper and clearer, less artifacting as well. But A. Jameson5579 thinks that the audio is sinking a little bit behind the video. And Dave Maydu is also experiencing that as well. Um, so picture's good, audio's not as good. Hopefully we'll be able to get that resolved, and unfortunately that will uh, re be reflected in the, uh, the recording for the RSS feeds as well, so forgive us for that. Uh, we'll try to work through uh, any issues that we have. That's too bad. Cool. Well, hmm. weird night, weird night. Get onto our website, cat category5.tv this week, and uh, check us out. Um, you can vote for each episode. We'd encourage you to do that. I'm working on the new uh, mobile version of our website, uh, version 2.0. And that incorporates your votes uh, in order to generate the top viewer uh, favorites as far as episodes go. So make sure you vote for every episode every week. Great. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a lot to put into getting the server up and running. So we're bound to have a few little issues. Like I said, I don't expect that it's up 100% tonight. But we'll work through and uh, and hopefully we'll be able to work out any little glitches uh, as we kind of tweak things and the fans and hard disks yeah you're gonna pick that up from um, probably from Krista's mic especially if I mute Krista's mic I'm just gonna do that for just a second we'll see if that is any better um, this is just from my headset mic so audio should be a lot better now and that's the kind of quality difference that we're gonna get from having these kind of mics uh, which we do now have thanks to your donations of course um, but they're not quite set up yet so I'm just I'm using mine uh, but Krista is unfortunately having to use uh, the old mic just for the time being it's the only other mic that it's the only one that survived the uh, the surge so um, so at least it works so uh, Corey yeah a couple of people have mentioned uh, low frame rate tonight the, the difference isn't in noise cancellation, Dave. Uh, Agamotto, what it is, is um, it's the simple fact. And it's interesting because these are Apex 575 mics, and you can, uh, I'll post a link in the, uh, in the show notes for 198. Um, these are omnidirectional, so they, they do pick up room noise. They do pick up background noise, but because it's so close to my mouth, the levels can be very, very low. It picks me up very clearly because it's right up to my mouth. So... Uh, so even though it is technically going to pick up stuff from the room, because the volume level, the input, is uh, is down so low, the gain on the mic, you're not actually hearing a lot of the background noise, so it comes in crystal clear. Okay. Chris is going to break into song. Fantastic. Maybe when you get Maybe your Maybe when I have headset, my pop star headset. Your pop star headset, yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you could do voiceovers while I'm singing. <laughs> Voiceovers. That would be good. Like an actual Translate. good singer, you know. Oh. While I'm singing, the people be like, wow. <laughs> She'll lip sync. And I'll be like, bring him home. And, and they'll be like, be that is voice. amazing. Who would have known? Sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, gang. Fantastic. Thanks for being a part of this uh, bit of a test episode tonight as we get uh, the new server set up and going. Uh, we're going to keep working it out. We're going to keep working on it. And I uh, hope you mm -hmm. enjoyed the, uh, the short show tonight. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll continue working on everything that, uh, that's going on with the servers. And Good, good. Uh, just checking messages here. Smitty Smith, um, I'll, I'll pop you an email. I appreciate that very much. We actually we do have um, the microphones here now, though. Uh, we have uh, these mics here, so if that's what you mean, uh, just offering um, that uh, that they may have some to donate. Um, but the funds did come in this week, and and we had uh, done a review of the microphone uh, on the on my blog. So if that's uh, but but let's chat, PM me or something. So cool. 
Thanks, everybody. I guess that's it for us. Wow. If I didn't get your question this week, you understand, I'm sure. But uh, we will try to get your question next week. And then, of course, episode 200 is uh, coming up on the 19th. So make sure that you're here for that. It's going to be a fun night. Um, again, we're going to be stepping out of format, but we're going to have a good time and, uh, and get to see some, some faces that, uh, that you haven't seen for a while. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. can't believe we're 200 episodes in. So, all right, everybody. Take care. Have a great see night. Ya. We'll see ya.